Woo! How are we doing? Good? Good to see everybody this morning. Happy 4th of July, almost. Um, we, anybody, we got doing fireworks and stuff. Who's bought their fireworks already? Yeah? Man, we're going to just blow stuff up. We're going to, we'll pray for y'all next Sunday, so it'll be fine, you know. Um, but no, good to see everybody. I was out last week. I missed you all. It is, it, it's just good to be home. There's no place like, like Rise Church, and uh, it is uh, good to see everybody this morning. We are fresh off a of vacation, so you get a special treat this morning, something that we've never done before. Um, me and Stephanie are going to try to do this together and not fight along the way, so it's going to be great. Um, I might get in a little bit of trouble, but we'll see. Hopefully not, because um, I'm within swinging distance from right here. So, um, But it is, uh, we're going to just jump right in, you know, when I was, uh, Whenever we were in Tanzania, this was years ago, we um, were working with an orphanage over there, and one of the, the children, um, her name was Happiness, and she ha- her came from a really abusive situation with her parents, and uh, yeah, this is her right here, uh, came from a really abusive situation, and it just so happened that while we were there that one of her parents, her father actually, was um, going to court. Um, he was on trial for the uh, murder of her mother. And um, we were invited to go to the court, uh, the sentencing hearing uh, with her. And so we, here was me and Stephanie and this, you know, whole group of, of children, the, the orphanage director. And um, we're sitting there, this entire court uh, case was all in Swahili, so we had no idea what was being said. All we knew was it was open air, and we looked over, and in this, literally like this cage, you know, those like... Um, well, you see like those diving cages, you know, where people go like sh- on, dive for sharks. It literally looked like that. And um, this man was, was inside of this cage waiting on his sentencing, waiting on his hearing. They have a similar way for us where you're innocent until proven guilty. Um, and yet, here's this man already locked up. And we, um, we're, we're sitting there and, and the sentence comes down. And they, they do it, and there's tears, and there's clapping, and just like what you'd see on TV, honestly. And I look over at the orphanage director who, who speak, spoke English, and, and I said, so what, what's the verdict? What happened? And um, they said, he's, he's guilty. He's going to go, go to prison. And it was um, one of the most impactful moments of my entire life, because here we are sitting with this, this girl and um, watching as her father, um, just all the dynamics and emotions that were at play there was um, a really impactful time, and it made me think a lot about freedom and how just grateful that we are for our freedom. Like, I remember just being over there, and they were telling us about how even talking against or, or, or using any kind of criticism towards, like, governmental authorities can get you thrown in jail. Uh, when you're over there, and, and aren't we grateful for America that we, we have freedom um, over here that we get to enjoy. So um, today we're going to talk a little bit about freedom and what that means that, that for us to be able to walk in freedom, because how many know who the sun sets free is free indeed, amen? amen. Yeah, when we were there, um, we would go on these, like, we're trying to find properties that, to buy so that we could build this orphanage from the ground up and also have some sustainability projects. So um, having enough land to be able to do different types of um, agricultural stuff. And one time we were driving, and there's this beautiful piece of land, and there was all these guys out there working in the fields. And I asked our orphanage director, her name was Margaret, and I said, Margaret, like, is that land for sale? Because, I mean, it was the most beautiful land ever. Like, it was at the base of Mount Kilimanjaro, so it was, like, mountainous, um, like, it's good soil, you know. And everything else there was dirt, so like, it was, like, just beautiful. We're like, oh, my gosh, yes, this is it. And she said, no, that land's not for sale. That's, um, that's government land, and those are actually prisoners that are working the fields. And they had, I looked back over at them, not one of them had any chains not, or any, like, thing holding them back. There wasn't any guard in any kind of sight I could see. So they appeared free, but they were really in bondage. They were really prisoners. And I think that's kind of true for a lot of us, especially with our walk with Jesus, that it can look to some people, we should be free as Christians. We should be able to move our lives and and walk into a freedom that nobody else can really recognize. That should be the thing that draws them in. But instead, really, we're held up in chains. It's Chase and I like to say it's freedom from, not freedom to. We have freedom from all the things that can oppress us. We're not free to do whatever we want, and that's a good thing. I think sometimes we think the law is kind of like, 
I don't, that's a rule book. It's like, no, there's freedom in knowing our boundaries. My parents, uh, they're right here, so they know. Um, I was raised pretty strict, which is good. I, I thrived, you know, under that. I think my siblings weren't as strict. They, I think they thought I was the bad kid, but I'm really the best out of the four. So um, <laughs> they haven't caught on to that yet, but one day, you know, they're, they, they're coming here. So slowly and surely we'll in, uh, indoctrinate them to that. But I was, uh, I just was a kind of a goody two shoes. I liked the safety of it. And I actually had friends that would come over to our house because their parents didn't have any rules. And they felt so much safer at our house because they knew my parents cared enough about us to not let us go and just live whatever crazy life we wanted. And so today we're going to kind of tackle that subject of freedom and what it looks like and, and to be free from the bondage of the world, but also free to just live for Jesus like never before. If you would turn with me to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. There's a story that some of you all be familiar with, um, and it goes right along with, with what we're talking about. Um, you know, how many people you know that, man, they love God. They, they have given their life to Jesus, and yet they're still stuck in this kind of bondage. They're still wrestling with the same sin over and over again. They're still just kind of stuck in the same repetitive cycle of unhealthy relationship after unhealthy relationship. And, and, and man, I just, my prayer is today that maybe it would be a day of freedom. For, for you, for your family member, that it would be a day that, that you, we start to realize and recognize what it looks like to, to walk in true freedom. So look at Acts chapter 16, uh, starting in um, verse 16. There we go. Thank you, Steph. Uh, 16, verse 16. It says this. As we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners much gain by fortune-telling. She followed Paul and us, crying out, These men are servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to you the way of salvation. And this she kept doing for many days. Can you imagine? Many days. Paul, having become greatly annoyed. I just love that it says greatly annoyed. Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very day. Hour. Now, one thing that has nothing to do really what we're talking about, but I love that Paul spoke to the spirit and not to the person. Yeah. He, he was able to see beyond just that this person is acting crazy and recognize that, no, this isn't, the person has created an image of God, but they have a spirit in them that needs to be taken care of and cast out. And I think that's important when it comes to freedom. But when her owners saw that their hope of gain was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers. And when they had brought them to the magistrates, they said, These men are Jews, and they are disturbing our city. They advocate customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to accept the practice. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates tore the garments off them and gave orders to beat them with rods. And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this order, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. So now Paul and Silas, because of the situation, have been thrown into prison. And here's what happens in verse 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Immediately, all the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. When the jailer woke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And the jailer called for the lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must, the Lord, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word to them, uh, to, and all two were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their wounds. He was baptized at once, he and all his family. 
You know, it's interesting, um, this, this girl that was following Paul and Silas around, you know, yelling, recognizing the anointing that was on their life, recognizing the call that was on their life and the message that they were uh, proclaiming. And Paul turns around and he casts out the spirit out of this girl and everyone gets mad. This, this, this person, she, she immediately loses her job and her bosses lose the profits that they were um, making from the work that they were having her do. Do you know that there's some people who don't want you to be free? There, there, there's people in your life that may have a hard time when, when you step out to actually be free of the thing that's holding us uh, bound. Uh, if you've ever tried to set a boundary with someone that didn't quite understand that boundary, you know exactly what I'm talking about. People have such a hard time recognizing um, this very thing in us, but it's when we step out to start to, to better ourselves and to serve God that, 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 that we start to walk in that freedom. I remember when me and Stephanie first got married, it was maybe less than a year into our marriage, maybe six months into our marriage. We were, we were getting dressed this is one of those great stories. I'm going to scoot over. Um, uh, we, we were getting dressed, and um, Steph, you know, we were getting dressed and uh, taking showers and putting clothes on and, and brushing teeth and, and, and all the things. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're getting ready to go. I and know what happens when you take get dressed. <laughs> yeah, 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 well, just so you know, we, we get dressed just like you do. And, and so we... We were getting dressed, and we were getting ready to leave. We had gotten dressed, we, were, we were getting ready to leave the, the house, and, and Stephanie looks at me, and she goes, oh, hey, while we're out, I need to get a toothbrush. And I said, and she says, I for, we were on a trip, and she says, I, I forgot my toothbrush. I need to get a toothbrush. And I said, what toothbrush did you just use? And she looked at me, like, do I tell him? And, and, and I looked at I said, did you use my toothbrush? And she was like, I didn't, I forgot mine. And that's when we learned about boundaries in our marriage. <laughs> that's when we learned about boundaries. And, um, you know, it was after the marriage counseling that, um, no, but, but there's this thing about setting parameters around our relationships with people, setting, setting parameters around the, the things and the choices that we're going to make so that we can walk in Freedom. I mean, how many knows it takes courage, it takes self-discipline to, to truly be able to, to serve God and, and make the choice to better yourself so that you can walk in the freedom and the call that God has on your life. It, it, it's things like, I'm not going to engage in those kind of conversations anymore. I'm not, I'm not going to talk that way anymore. Uh, they're not helpful for me to, to, to interact in this kind of conversation. It's just fueling unforgiveness. It's fueling more resentment. It's fueling more bitterness. And, and, and it's not helpful for me, so I'm no longer going to do it. How many know just doing that can make people feel really uncomfortable? Because it, it, what it does when you start to set those kind of boundaries, and it can be just that, it's like, I'm not going to hang out, you know, at this place anymore. I'm not going to um, uh, go to those places anymore. I'm not going to hang out with this crowd anymore because it's not the direction that I'm trying to take my life. I'm not going to spend money on that anymore or waste my time doing those things anymore. People have a hard time understanding that. When you start to make that step out, because I think it's because a lot of times it, it, it causes them to have to confront um, their own bondage in their own life, honestly. And, and, and so many people are so comfortable with right where they are. When, when they start to see you like step up and go uh, rise above all of that, they're, they're like left of like, oh, but now I've got to either do something about it or I've got to make the conscious choice to just stay where I am. And it makes it really tough on people. But, but, but God uh, has equipped us and enabled us and empowered us to say, no, 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 I, I, I'm, I'm going to walk in this freedom and I'm going to set the guardrails and the discipline around my life so that I can. I'm going to prioritize my marriage and prioritize my time with my children and, and, and let the phone ring and let the text message go unanswered if that's what it means because I'm, I'm, I'm setting myself up and my life up to be able to walk in the freedom that Jesus has uh, given me. Dallas Willard has a great quote that, that I love that some of you probably heard me say before, but it, it, he says that grace is not opposed to effort, it's opposed to earning. Meaning, meaning we can all, we walk in the grace of God and it's a gift that's been given to all of us, 
But, but how many know in order to, to really experience the, the grace that he's given us, man, he's given us disciplines and practices and things that we can do as a means of grace so that we can walk in the freedom that Jesus has uh, given us. And I just want to encourage you today, man, but maybe you've got people in your life that are, that are shaming you or trying to like come against you for, for different boundaries and different things and different um, parameters that you've just set up. It's like, no, I, I used to do that, but I'm not going to do that anymore. Stay the course. Stay the course. I'm telling you, your walk, your decision, your leadership, it's making an influence in their life, whether they like it or not. They're going to see you rise above it. They're going to see your life change. They're going to see you go in a whole new direction. They're going to see doors start to open in your life and opportunity and opportunity and the things that once held you down that they're still dealing with and you're near now walking and free of it. One day they're going to look and say, how did you do that? Because I want it to. And that's the place that we can begin to really see God move in their life. But it's hard. There's so many people that, that they just refuse to take that step. I remember... Um, just a few years ago, there was a, a, a guy that had come to church a few times, and we, we got connected. We started building relation, you know, just became really friends. And um, he shared with me, after the first time he ever visited our church, he shared with me, he said, I'm an alcoholic. He said, I, straight up, he said, I've been an alcoholic for years. Um, I've been to rehab. I've, I've done detox. I've done all the things. He said, I am an alcoholic. He said, I, I can't break out of it. I said, man, well, I'm, I'm here. I'll, I'll walk with you through it. I'll do anything I can for you. And we started talking. I mean, we talked a couple times a week um, there for a while. He would share with me. He'd, you know, I'd try to hold him accountable, try to be there for him, to encourage him, to, to, to help him and as best as I could. And I'll never forget, we were on the phone one week, and he had, he had just gotten out of rehab. He did 30 days in rehab, and he had just gotten out, and he had, had been like two weeks. And, and he was like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm clean. I'm sober. Um, he said, but I'm just really having a hard time. He said, what you don't understand is that me getting sober, he said, it, it, it doesn't only, it's not, it's not just about the alcohol, it's about the friendships, it's about the community. It's, it's, he said, I find my, my friends are at the bar. My community is at the bar. And it broke my heart to hear him say that. Because for him, he, he found that, that identity in his addiction. He found his identity in getting wrapped up in all of that. And how many know that the second he gets clean, he's exactly right. He does lose all of those friendships because it wasn't real friendship. It was the addiction. And, and, and misery loves company. Prison loves company. You're all in it together. You're, 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 you're right there together. But for him... The biggest reason he couldn't get free is because it would mean severing relationships. And to this day, unfortunately, that, that guy is still right on that path. He's struggling. He's been to rehab several times since then. I still talk to him uh, occasionally, and he, he's right in the midst of it. One day he's going to be free. One day he's going to get it. One day he's going he's to see um, that happen. But it's a place that so many people find themselves, find themselves in. Yeah, because... What he's not willing to do right now is to sacrifice for that freedom. Freedom requires sacrifice, just like the sacrifice for us to be in church today happened because of soldiers laying their lives down for us. It requires a sacrifice. Um, I think about when Paul and Silas, they're in prison, and it says they began to pray and sing hymns. And I thought, oh, my gosh, they're, that would be the hardest thing. If you put me in prison, shackled up my feet after I've been beaten, I don't would that come out of me? Would be praising God, worshiping him, saying the truth about him, would that come out of me? And I think of it as a sacrifice of praise. The Bible talks a lot about a sacrifice of praise, of just even when you don't feel like it, you got to do it. And, and, and they had this, Paul and Silas had this forethought of like, okay, my circumstances say that I am in prison, that I am not free, but I am free. I can I can sing to God, I can worship, and they were experiencing true freedom, and, and true freedom is being able to look at the thing that you crave more than anything in the face and say no, because that's not what is best for me. What's best for me is what God has for me. You know, I think about like the chocolate bar, you know, if, I don't know if anybody else has that struggle at night, but I'll have like 16 little chocolate bars because the little ones make you feel better about yourself, and so I go for the little ones, you know, I'm like Chase comes from Sam's, it's like, all these little Hershey bars, and like, okay, well. We buy in bulk. We, yeah, yeah, that's right. 
And uh, so the other day I was like, oh, I really want to eat this next one. I was like, no, I'm not going to do it because I, I knew what was going to happen, which is the next day I was going to have a huge stomach ache and there's no one else to blame than me not having the self-discipline. And I don't think I've ever in my life I've decided like, hey, I, to withstand from something and then regret that withstanding. I regret giving into it. And it's that, that, that stronghold. You know, I don't know if anybody watches Netflix, but that's like my go-to. I like talking about shows and podcasts. Like if you talk to me for two minutes, that's what you're going to hear. And um, all, while we were on vacation, there was uh, the Arnold Schwarzenegger. I can't say his name, right? Whatever. <laughs> Let's make sure we don't say any other bad words there. Um, he was on uh, yeah, Chase. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's my best Arnold Schwarzenegger I could give. Keep your day job. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, so he had like, you know, it's, he's a bodybuilder and he's talking about his bodybuilding, uh, like raising up in that. And then he had this other one that just came out that me and Chase just binge watched was um, Muscles and Mayhem. Is that what it's called? American, it's, about, it's about American Gladiators. American Gladiators, whatever. Yeah. And um, there, there's this one part, there's no spoilers, don't worry. But there's a part where they, they have this per diem and they had really under, ever, underestimated how much these bodybuilders were going to eat because they're going to not eat McDonald's. They're going to go and eat like clean steak or clean just grilled chicken breast, which sounds like my personal H-E double hockey sticks. Like, ain't no way. Just eating a plain chicken breast. Give me the fried chicken. I'll do the fried chicken, but I ain't going to do that. So they, they do this, and it's a sacrifice that they for of convenience because they know what they wanted the end result to be. So, hey, if I want to be over here and I want to be this bodybuilder, that means I can't just eat the McDonald's or the KFC. That means I'm going to have to wake up earlier and I'm going to have to get everything food prepped. I got to be prepared for what I got to do. It's a sacrifice. And maybe you're not a bodybuilder, so you're like, okay, whatever, Stephanie. But maybe yours is you want to be present with your family. You know, that's something that Chase and I have to really be on guard for both of us on is making sure that we're present with our kids. Our phone gets blown up all the time. And on vacation, we even set aside of like, we're not going to talk about work. We're not going to talk about things. We're going to have intentional time. But that meant putting the phone away. That meant deleting Facebook and Instagram off of our phones for the week. It meant sacrificing this, the comfort now for what we wanted, what's God's best for us later. And so maybe, you know, statistically, I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes this morning, but maybe the statistic is 75% of the men in this room are dealing with an addiction to porn. And I'm not, again, I'm not calling you out. I got my own stuff, right? I got anxiety that I worked through. I got depression that I worked through. But I'm just going to use this as an example. So maybe you're dealing with that, and you don't know how to get out. Maybe the first step is just to have the computer in the main room to where you can't do anything in secret. It's setting yourself up. Of a, it's, in, it's inconvenient. It's easier for it to be in my office. It's easier for it to be in my room. But I'm going to make it a sacrifice because I'm choosing what is good for me, what God has for me, I'm free from this addiction, and I'm going to be walking into that freedom. But that freedom requires a sacrifice. You know, we, uh, we went to Silver Dollar City this week, and I hate roller coasters. It's my dad's fault. He made me go on a Jurassic Park ride when I was, like, four, and I have never forgiven him. Um, God's working <laughs> on me. And uh, I hate it. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. And uh, Chase is the opposite. And so and now our son has come after me. He's like, uh, he hates him. He won't look at him. He has to look at YouTube videos so he knows exactly where the turn's going to happen. Like, it's, it's a process. So it, it's fun. I now understand my parents, what they had to deal with for so long. Um, but I feel for him. So, and then my daughter's like the daredevil. So she's like with Chase. And so it's like a battle of, you know, mom and son versus daughter and, and husband. And it's, it's fun. But um, on the trip, I really don't want Tucker to grow up with this fear. That's something that I have, but I don't want him to take on mine. I want him to be brave. And so I've been trying better at doing these roller coasters without throwing a fit. And so Chase was like, hey, let's do Outlaw Run. Has anybody done Outlaw Run at Silver City? City? Okay, we got a row here of crazies. Um, <laughs> So we get up there, I'm like, oh, like they don't have like the, you know, the shoulder harness. So I'm thinking, there's no way they're going to do flips. No, they're not going to do it. And this kid in front of us in line's like, oh, no, they're going to corkscrew and they're going to do all this stuff. I was like, shut up, shut up, yeah. shut up. <laughs> I was like, absolutely not. He's like, oh, you'll be fine. Tucker's watching you, you know, pulling on the heartstrings. 
And so I was like, okay, but I said, you owe me. Like, we had given the kids some money for good attitudes, and I was like, I'm also getting said money. Like, I am not, I, this is, I'm milking this for all it's worth. And we got on it, and it was the worst 90 seconds of my <laughs> life. And I got off, and Chase, and Tucker's like, how was it? I was like, it was awful. And I just, like, it was just me mugging, and Chase was like, do you want me to, like, rub your shoulders? I'm like, absolutely not. Like, I, you don't touch me. I don't want to look at you. He's like, I didn't force you. I'm like, yes, you did. And she didn't talk to me for, like, an hour and a half, yeah, just I so did. y'all know. I was, yeah. I was that was two days ago, so this is it's still fresh. Yeah, obviously I'm working <laughs> through my forgiveness. But, um, so... I don't even know why I brought that up, other than to, like, be free. Um, I'm not free of my roller coaster fear yet, but, you know, maybe one day we'll, we'll get trekking along on that. <laughs> one of the, the things that I thought that Stephanie said that was so true that I, I think we all need to catch is being free. True freedom is not the ability to just do whatever we want whenever we want to do it. That, that's the biggest actual, that's the way to find yourself into bigger bondage, actually. You'll, you'll, this, you'll choose your way right into another addiction. You'll choose your way right into health problems. You'll choose your way right into all sorts of, of issues. True freedom is not uh, the ability just to do whatever you want. That's what the world will tell you that it is, or culture will tell you what it is. But true freedom is the ability to look at that thing that you crave that you know is not what's best for you and to say no. To, to say, no, I'm not going to give in to that because I'm free from it. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm free of it. And in order to get there, it requires boundaries. It requires disciplines. It requires uh, uh, putting guardrails and frame around our life to say, there are things that I do and there's things that I don't do so that I can live in freedom, so that I don't find myself stuck um, ever again in this thing that used to hold me bound, whether it's shame or fear or a drug or uh, whatever it may be. And, and, and it requires sacrifice, it requires effort, it requires uh, guardrails. Um, it also requires, uh, I believe, accountability. It requires other people walking in freedom with us. You know, I, I think it was no mistake that Paul and Silas were together when they were in prison. They were together when they were worshiping God. They were together when the chains fell off. Because in order to, to, to walk in freedom, I think we have to walk in freedom with someone. We have to walk in freedom um, together to have that person in our life that's there to pray and then support and encourage and pick us up when we fall down and and, and to to continue to be there. Um, And it means oftentimes swallowing our pride, acting in humility that says, I need help. I can't get there on my own. I, I, I've tried to do this in secret. I've tried to just uh, white knuckle it. I've tried to just not tell anybody what's really going on and just kind of overcome it myself. And I keep falling back into it time and time and time again. Why? Because you need to open up to somebody. Because you need somebody that's along that path with you to um, help guide and show you the way and to be there to hold you accountable. It's kind of like this. I was thinking about um, what happens a lot, and I kind of mentioned this earlier is that, you know, you've got somebody that's kind of chained up, right? I'm going to use you as an example here. So, uh, yeah. So, you've got... This is church. (laughs) (laughs) Don't get any ideas. All right. Okay. I can't do that. Okay. You just completely, you completely threw me off. Okay. Um, So, you've got, you've got somebody that's chained, right? And then what often happens is that that person's, that person's closest relationships, their closest friendships, their even could be even family, also are chained up, right? Oftentimes, this is, this is what relationships look like. You've got two people, or a group of people even, that are all in the same trap. They're in the same uh, issue together. And what happens is we can't free each other because we're both in chains, what it takes oftentimes is, Jackson, we come here, man? Come here, buddy. This is my friend Jackson. Isn't he cool? Yeah. So, so what it often takes is somebody that maybe has walked through it but is now free to come and to help us take off the chains. Right? It, 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 what happens so many times, and, and then now that I'm free, now I can help free somebody else. See, but it only happens as we walk through it together. There's no way to get out of bondage on your own. So many times people look at, man, I can't get out of this. I can't get out of this. And they're surrounded by the same people struggling with the same stuff 
over and over and over again, and then they wonder why they're stuck. Maybe it has to do with the relationships. Maybe it has to do with the people we surround ourselves with. Maybe it has to do with uh, the things that we're putting in. I put it on mute just, just in case I say anything inappropriate. That way it doesn't get out on the, on the live stream. Um, gosh, this is a train wreck. We're never doing this again. Um, <laughs> verse 26 says, I'm going to get to verse 26. Verse 26 says, And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bonds were unfastened. Your freedom will cause others to be free. Just like Chase just said with that, but it's amazing to me to think about Paul and Silas are in there, they're worshiping, an earthquake comes, but it's not just Paul and Silas's chains that come off, it's everybody's. And when we're with Jesus and we're having this encounter with him, it should be so evident that it just, other people's chains just start dropping and dropping and dropping. And I feel like, you know, I always, I love that scripture that God turns everything around for the good. And I know sometimes that's a hard scripture for us to handle, right? Because we're going to be going through the thick of it and we're like, I don't, God is making this, you know, for his benefit. Like, what is this? What's this all about? But if you put it in the framework of this story, that jailer was in there. And that jailer and his entire household was free because of Paul and Silas being in prison. It's amazing to me that if you just looked at it, if you just had a bird's eye view and you looked at the prison, you would have seen two men in shackles and a guard outside that didn't have any chains. You would assume the jail guy, the jail, what is it called? Jailbreaker? The jailer? Know. Jailer, there we go. Jailbreaker. I don't know. One who works in a jail? One who works. <laughs> Can you give me the, uh, <laughs> the origin of that word? Yeah. Um, Anyways, gosh, get off track. Um, but you would have seen that the jailer appeared to be free, but it was really Paul and Silas that were free. I have people in my life all the time that amaze me and that, to me, bring my faith up when I see people worshiping in spite of their circumstances. Amen. I had a, a girl that I was um, friends with, I was a coworker with, and within the two years, she had a stillborn baby, she had two miscarriages, and her mother died. And... Then she was told that she wasn't going to be able to have any kids anymore, all within two years. And I had dinner with her one night, and she could not stop talking about how awesome Jesus was. And it wasn't from a place of neglecting the reality. You know, if you come to Bloom, you've heard me say, sit in the suck. Like, sometimes you got to sit there and say, this is awful, and this is really hard. But I know who God is in control. This girl was just the epitome. She raised my faith. She broke chains off of me just by seeing her worship by seeing her be free in spite of her circumstances. Our circumstances don't what isn't what causes us to be free. It's Jesus who causes us to Amen. be free. And he wants us to be co-laborers with him, which means, just like Chase said, it's our job to go un and untangle other people. But we can't do that by ourselves. we got to have a group of people. That's why groups are important. Rise, guys. Bloom. Helping hands. It's important to have your people because there's going to be times that you can't see out. That's right. There's going to be times it's dark. Bloom has helped me more than, I do it selfishly for me, honestly. I mean, I do it for you guys too, but I do it for me because there was times I couldn't pray for myself. I remember, not to call, I always call Dana out. Sorry, Dana, but you talk the most at Bloom, so that's your <laughs> fault. Um, but she asked one time, she said, will you guys pray for me? And it was such a powerful moment because that was her first time that she had asked for prayer for herself. You have to have people that step in and pray for you when you can't pray for yourself. Those are the times that you need someone to come in there and co-labor with Christ to undo chains. We're all going to have chains. We're, until we're going to heaven, we're going to have things that we're going to have to fight against, things that we're going to have to sacrifice. But we're, it's through community and through Jesus who we're already fought and he's already won. We just That's have right. to continue to walk in that freedom. That's and it's, right. a, it's a choice and it's a sacrifice and it's not fun. And you want to, and you can get angry, and I've done it all, but you have to remember that you are free. The devil wants to think, make you think that you're trapped. You're not trapped. You're free. And this is just a throwaway piece for you. If your instinct when you're going through something is to go and hide, that you should do the exact opposite. That's I've right. I've seen so many people self-sabotage because they have been, if that something hard happened and they retreat. 
and then they get bitter and they get, they're hurting and all this stuff happens. That's the opposite of what you need to be doing. If you get hurt, you run to the church. That's what the church is here for. The church isn't here just for a bunch of us to give each other like slaps on the butt and say, you're doing good. Don't slap anybody on the butt. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like people, it's not here just for that. It's to encourage, to uplift, to walk beside, to, to not do life alone. If we wanted to do life alone, why would we have this place? This place is a hospital for all of us. Because some of us, we have things that hurt, and we need other people in our lives. Whenever those chains broke off of Pilate, Paul and Silas, it wasn't just Paul and Silas that, broke the, the, that had the chains fall off. It said the entire jail, that chains fell off of everybody. And I think that's just a powerful thing, that, that when you walk in freedom, it, it, it frees other people, and, and, and that we're, we are free to free others. Um, this morning, when you came in, you had communion um, that was handed to you, and what I want to do as we kind of wrap up here is, man, what better way to think about our freedom than to remember the price that, and the sacrifice that Jesus made, that, that Jesus is the one that defeated sin that paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom, your freedom, and for mine. And he invites all of us now to, to repent and believe. That's really what the call is, to, to examine ourselves. Paul talks about in Corinthians, he says, uh, before you take communion, that we should examine ourselves, that we should ask ourselves, God, what is in me that's, 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 that's binding me? What's in me that's, that's holding me captive? What, what sin in my life is, is, is just trapping me from being able to step into and walk in, in the call that you have on my life? Before we take this, I, I just want to take us a second to, to do that very thing. To, to really wrestle with this thing of like, God, what is it that's holding me back from where it is that you want me to go? What, 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 do, you, what, what do you need to be set free from? It's really as simple as that. What do you need to be set free from? And as we examine ourselves this morning and we give that before the Lord, and as we take this communion, we remember that his body was broken for our healing and his blood was shed for our forgiveness. That he's already paid the price to set us free. And aren't you grateful that we, that he did what we cannot do on our own? That all we do this morning is we just simply receive and we remember that the victory's already been won. It's our job just now to walk it out so that we can truly experience the freedom that, that Christ gives us. Can we do that this morning? Would you stand with me? Father, right now, Holy Spirit, I just thank you that you're in this place. Father, and I thank you, Lord, that you're breaking chains in Jesus' name. Lord, would you, as we examine ourselves today, Holy Spirit, would you reveal to us, God, maybe the sin that's in our life that we've been holding on to, refusing to let go of, refusing to, to sacrifice, and refusing to lay down, God, but that we know deep down that it's keeping us trapped, it's keeping us in bondage. Father, would you, would you help us to, to overcome the things that, that are trying to weigh us down? God, whether it be fear or shame or a bad habit, whatever it may be. Father, and as we take this communion, may me remember the sacrifice that you made for us. God, may we remember, Lord, that you came so that the captive could be free. Lord, and that this morning that we do, we walk in freedom. The Bible says that on the night he was betrayed, that Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body that was broken for you. And they ate. And then he took the cup. He took the cup and he said, this is the blood, my blood of the new covenant spilled for you for the forgiveness of sins. And we receive that this morning. God, I thank you, Lord, that we've been forgiven and that we've been set free. Jesus, we receive you now into our lives, that we 
surely can walk in the freedom that you've given us. Lord, and I pray for every person here, God, that maybe finds themselves in chains, that finds themselves just wrestling, Father, over and over again with something in their life that they just can't seem to break free from. I pray right now, God, that that chain is broken right now in Jesus' name. Lord, that I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're moving in this place right now. Father, we surrender everything to you. We're gonna sing, we're gonna worship, but as we do, what I wanna do, just invite you to come forward for prayer. Um, Maybe you're here, maybe you've been wrestling. Maybe you're one of the ones we've been talking about this morning. You're just like, man, I just just feel like this thing's got a hold on me and I haven't been able to break free from it. If that's you, man, as we worship, I invite you to come forward. Let us pray, because I believe that God wants to set you free this morning. If you have other needs that you um, have going on, I invite you to come down as well. Man, we want to pray healing. We want to pray deliverance. We want to just agree with you for whatever's going on. Let's worship together. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance. From my enemies Till all my fears are gone And I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God Yeah, I'm no longer child of God from my mother's womb you have chosen me love has called my name and I've been born again into your family and your blood flows through
Yes, I am a child of God. Yes, I am a child of God. Thank you, Jesus. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. You split the sea so I walk right through it my fears were drowned in your perfect love you rescued me so I could stand and sing I am a child of God I'm no child of God. I'm no longer slave to fear. Yes, I am a child of God. Yes, I am a child of God. Yes, I am of God. Can we all give the Lord praise this morning for the message that was brought forth? Amen. As there's people still being prayed for, let's respect uh, that they are being prayed for, but we're going to go ahead and dismiss. Um, one note is that if you have kids in kids' church today, uh, you'll be picking them up on the playground today. If you all would lift up your hands to heaven, I'll pray a blessing over to you, and we will do an official dismissal. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, everyone said. Amen. Thank you all so much for coming today. This is the official dismissal. If you still need prayer, please go ahead and come on down. We're happy to pray. As you split the sea so wide.